If you look to some other subset of cyclists, let's say a crit racer, a road racer, a sprinter, you would argue, well, okay, what else is important to them? Well, obviously sprint power, anaerobic power, high intense power output, right, for short efforts. That's also not in here, right? This is the Modigan endurance kind of test. So unfortunately, this is where this test falls short. Now you can argue, okay, okay, but nowadays, hey, we have power meters, we do powderation curves, right? We test maximum power output over one minute and two minutes or 30 seconds and six minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, and then we get a powderation curve. And then we can understand actually did the power over one minute or 30 seconds in the short time, time ranges, did it go up? And therefore did anaerobic performance go up? Good thinking, but it falls a little bit short because this just tells you that the power went up. For example, in a one minute effort, it's approximately already 50% aerobic. So when you have a higher power output, it could be that the anaerobic system improved. Uh, it could also be that, you know, the aerobic system improved. And then the anaerobic system is partly creating phosphate capacity and partly it's glycolysis, so breakdown of gly glycogen or glucose to lactate. So just looking at the power doesn't tell you anything about that. And if it's better lactate production, if it's better glycolytic performance, is it really that? Or is it better buffering capacity? Was the athlete able to handle the acidosis better? Because that, you know, could lead to higher lactate concentration. So long story short, without going into a rabbit hole, the lactate curve doesn't tell you that. And unfortunately, a critical power moderation curve tells you as yeah, a power output is higher, but it does not necessarily tell you the physiological reasons for that. And therefore also doesn't tell you exactly how your training actually works. We are going to come to that, okay?